Hello and welcome to Healthy Mind, Healthy Life with your host Avik. This podcast is all about exploring the latest research, sharing personal stories and providing personal tips for improving our mental health and well-being. Each episodes will be joined by experts in the field of mental health as well as individuals who have experienced the transformative power of a healthy mind firsthand. Together we will dive into a range of topics from managing stress and anxiety to building resilience and cultivating happiness. So, join us on this journey to discover new ways to take care of our minds, bodies and souls and let's work together to create a healthier, happier world one episode at a time. So, let's get started. Hello and welcome to Healthy Mind Healthy Life. I'm your host Avik and today I am excited to introduce to our guest Christian Espinosa. Welcome to the show Christian. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Lovely, lovely. So Christian like before we start our conversation I would love to mention this to all of our listeners that uh Christian is a renowned thought leader and the best selling author. So like from his book The Smartest Person in the Room to his latest release the in between life in the micro yes you heard it correct so christian shares insights on uh, the personal transformation and the leadership so why to wait join us as we explore christian's journey from uh, validation seeking to profound purpose and learn how to embrace the life's micro moments with the intention so welcome to the show again christian thank you thanks for the kind words as well the kind introduction i appreciate it that way so christian like to start with if you can share with us the uh, inspiration behind your latest book the in between life in the micro uh, and how it releases uh, i mean it relates to uh, navigating the life's micro and macro moments so i was thinking about writing a couple of different books and uh the the micro moment book was this persistent feeling i had that i needed to write the book on that topic and i witnessed a car accident a couple years ago um and for some reason that car accident solidified that this is the next book i need to write uh because in that car accident uh i wasn't directly in the accident there was a a car that t-boned the truck pretty fast at an intersection and we were behind the the truck the truck got pushed back into my vehicle but i was able to back up enough before it hit me too hard and that was like a micro it was a macro thing that happened but there's micro moments within it uh cuz the woman got out of the car the like, she was pretty severely injured uh i think she was in shock and she got out of the car and there's like glass falling off of her and you know her arm looks broken her she's bleeding uh and my girlfriend and i got out of our car to help uh she's a nurse and i'm i just want to help other people so i got out and i'm i'm trained as well in like these kind of responses and things and she, my girlfriend helped that woman to the the pavement before she fell uh, cuz she you know she could barely walk and she was in shock and i checked on the guy that the, the drove the truck he was okay but what what struck me was the woman that my girlfriend helped to the pavement the only thing she wanted in that time of crisis was to speak with her husband so she asked me if i could call her husband for her and she gave me the number i called her husband i you know relayed the situation to him and then gave her the phone and it, it's just for some reason like in in all of life you know when something like that happens you just want to speak with someone you you care about and that witnessing that is what uh, solidified for me the the that this is what I need to write the book about because in my life I've been hyper focused on this macro goal often at the expense of things that were right in front of me you know between where I am and where I wanted to go I had moments where I could have added value to a scenario or paid attention to a relationship um or been more present and that helps would have helped relationships that would have helped me feel f- more fulfilled and you know other things so yeah that's why i wrote the book it's more of a focus memoir where where i got 
things right and where I've got them wrong. Uh, probably more of where I've got them wrong, where I've like, you know, messed up relationships because I've been so focused on something else right, at the expense of what was right in front of me. You got it. Understood. <clears throat> so um, in your book, uh, you discuss the importance of consciously living in the uh, micro moments. So if you could elaborate like on what do you mean by this and how it contributes to a fulfilling life? I think the micro moments are those little moments right in front of us that we often don't think matter that much. Uh, and it's interesting for me, uh, I've had a few of these I've experienced recently that I've noticed have like f affected my uh, mental state. Um, one happened a long time ago. I wrote about it in, in actually both of my books. I was going through a divorce. Uh, it was, you know, I was struggling quite a bit. And I was checking out uh, at this grocery store, the checkout lane, and the cashier uh, looked looked me in the eye. She could tell something was wrong with me. Like I was, you know, in pain and, and suffering of this divorce, and it was, you know, it was, it was challenging. And she she stopped like scanning the groceries, you know, looked me in the eye, and just asked if I was okay, um, in a sincere manner. And that was a very small thing, a very micro thing. But that 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 happened like. 25 years ago and I still think about it because it, it, it really made me realize you know other people do care and then just a couple of days ago I had like the opposite experience I was walking um by my by the pool here and this guy walked by me I, I you know made eye contact eye contact eye contact with him and I smiled and said how's it going he looked right at me looked the other way and didn't say anything so that little small moment like got me upset for the I'm like what was wrong with that guy you know it's like I started it started bothering me and I think you know when we look at life as a collection of these small moments like it to just a smile at somebody like a genuine smile that doesn't cost you anything but it can actually impact that person's day like the woman that asked me how I was doing um, at that grocery store you know we often forget about that and we're so busy with our cell phones and other things that we forget like we have the ability to really enhance other people's lives. And what I found is if we can enhance somebody else's life, the energy is going to come back to us and we're going to feel better ourselves. All right. Understood. So, um, here also, like, how do you suggest the individuals uh, strike that balance between focusing on macro goals and uh, appreciating the smaller moments in life, which we believe uh, somehow we uh, are losing day by day? That's uh, the challenge is the balance, uh, especially, you know, I'm a, I would say a high achiever, I guess. I, I've done a lot of things. Uh, so I'm right now I'm trying to build a new business and it's easy to get sucked into only work on the business, but I'm also in a relationship and I have to be cognizant. Like, you know, at the end of the day, if I build this business and I'm so hyper-focused on it and I get it to whatever success level I want, but everything along the journey, everything else, like this relationship falls apart because I don't put any time into it, or my health falls apart because I don't exercise, you know, it, it's not going to make the journey any better. So I think, you know, trying to balance that is challenging for sure, especially if you're trying to build a business. But I also believe that if you pay attention to these small things in front of us, sometimes they inform us like this macro thing you're going after may not actually be the thing you really want to go after. But we sometimes get so hyper-focused on that thing that we remove any input along the way that says, maybe this isn't really what you want to do. And that also you know, is, involves tuning into yourself and thinking, what do I want my life to look like? Because life ultimately, for me, it, it's about how we feel or how I feel on a daily and hourly and by minute basis. And if this journey is leaving me feeling miserable to accomplish something that I think will make me happy, but I'm ignoring the things right in front of me, then I need to reevaluate my life and think, you know, maybe I should be on a different journey or figure out how to, how to bring the people I, I value along with, the, with me on this journey and how to incorporate some things that I like along this journey as well. Those micro things um, that are important also. Right. Well, so, uh, I mean, you have experienced the various uh, ad adventures and challenges 
from uh, skydiving to Ironman uh, triathlons. So how have these experiences shaped your perspective on balancing the micro and macro moments? Well, one of them was I was climbing Mount Elbrus, which is in Russia. Uh, so the, to get to the summit is kind of a macro goal, right? But while I was climbing the mountain, um, there's like a steep section, like 45 degree angle. You have to kick your, your feet in uh, to create like a platform and you have crampons on your boots. So you have to kick several steps in, put your foot there, kick the next one, put your foot there and kind of go up and up and up. Uh, Cause you can't, you know, you can't climb as it's snow. So you have to make these little platforms. And on that mountain, you know, kicking in is kind of a micro thing. I started daydreaming. I started thinking about something else and I wasn't paying attention to how deep or how firm uh, the platform I was kicking in was. So I, Tried to take a step up. Uh, what I thought I would kicked in was good enough, like slid out from under me and I started sliding down the mountain. And, you know, if a 45 degree angle, you're, you start sliding pretty fast, the snow. Uh, and it all happened very quickly, but I was able to, you know, I was on my back for a while. I was able to flip over, dig my ice axe in and stop the, the fall. Uh, and I had to, you know, eventually climb back up to the rest of the team. But what I realized was in this micro moment, I didn't pay attention and it almost cost me my life, it, even though I was on the way to this macro goal. And, you know, that that's just one sort of extreme example. Um, but I, I think it's important to realize that the macro thing is really a collection of all these micro steps along the way as well. Uh, and, and especially, you know, especially like mountaineering and other, you know, that it, yeah, that, that one uh, w- was a pretty... A sobering moment because I could have died. So that that, that 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 always comes to mind as well. Not everything is life and death, though. So, uh, also, like, uh, <clears throat> what are the practical strategies or techniques can listeners implement to become uh, more present and mindful in their everyday lives? I think there's a few things. Uh, one of them is tuning in to yourself uh, and tuning out to the rest of the world. I think we often are filled with distractions and we don't really know ourselves or we don't know how to set an intention. So it's important, like just take some quiet time, listen to yourself, which will tell you like what you want to do, what your purpose is maybe, uh, what you want out of life versus what you don't want. A lot of us know what we don't want, but we don't know what we do want. And ignore everything else, social media, your friends, your parents, your upbringing, just ignore that and tune it yourself. And then once you have that awareness, I think it's easier to set some intention. And when you're showing up in these moments, if you have some intention, you can influence the moment. And that's important. And I write about an example in my book, uh, like going to dinner uh, with my girlfriend, for instance. You know, that that seems like a simple thing, but I set the intention like, okay, the purpose of our dinner is to enjoy each other's company, uh, you know, and that seems simple, but we don't do it very often. Then like if the waiter like messes something up or somebody spills something on you, as long as you have that intention, like the whole point is to have a great, you know, connection uh, with um, my girlfriend then those things don't matter as much. But if you don't set that intention, what often happens is your life kind of becomes circumstantial. Uh, Somebody spills something and you let that derail you and you focus on that because you didn't set the intention. So I think that is extremely important. And another thing that ties along with these two is is monotasking. Um, In our world today, we are constantly responding to other people, you know, text messages, Slack messages, Discord messages, whatever the platform is. And if we're always doing that, it makes us very busy, but not very productive. That's number one. The second thing is we're not present. And you mentioned presence. Uh, I think presence is extremely important. And if I'm out to dinner with someone and I'm on my cell phone that while I'm trying to talk to them, I'm not present and it doesn't make them feel appreciated at all. Like with me, if somebody asks me something, I start talking about it. Then they, the person picks up their phone and starts texting. And I just stop talking because I, I feel like, what's the point here? Obviously, this text message from a random stranger 
is more important than our our dialogue. And I think we 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 tend to uh, forget that sometimes today. We feel like we have to respond on our phone instantly, and that makes it difficult to be present. It makes it difficult to have those meaningful micro moments, uh, because rarely does that, that text message on your phone or whatever you know matter, in my opinion. Got it. Understood. So, uh, <clears throat> like, how do you prioritize and manage your time effectively to ensure that both macro goals and micro moments receive adequate attention in your life? It's not always easy, especially since I am building a new business. There's a lot of demands. Um, but what I, I do is I use blocks of time on my calendar. I will put a block of time where I'm going to work on one specific thing. And then I'll even put a block of time in there where I'm going to take, you know, go work out, uh, you know, for one thing, if I, I want to make sure I stay healthy. I also put a block in time in there where I'm going to spend some time with my girlfriend, for instance. Um, so, and then nobody can schedule something with me. And I try to honor those blocks of time as well, because if if number if number one, if you don't use time blocks, you're not going to accomplish probably what you want to accomplish on a macro level anyway. Uh, if you're always just kind of like go through your day just responding to other people, you're not going to make progress on on that macro goal. And then you're not going to have the intention of the micro things or the other things you're trying to accomplish, like you know a meaningful conversation or connection with somebody in your life because um, you you didn't plan for it. And I think it's easy to get overwhelmed today with, like I said, the, the demands from other people. So putting those things on the calendar uh, will help you achieve the thing you're trying to accomplish because you, you you set aside a certain amount of time each day to do it. And then you also set aside the time to tend to the things that are important in your life at, at the present as well, um, such as a relationship, such as your health, uh, such as maybe making sure your finances are in order or, or whatever those may be. But you, for me, what works for me is to to put them on the calendar and block them out and honor that calendar. So if I'm doing something on the calendar, that's all I'm doing. If I am if I have in the calendar to have lunch um, with a friend, I go have lunch with my friend, I don't check my phone, I don't do anything else. I just do that one thing. Uh, and I think that re removes a lot of stress from my life because uh, rarely is there something that I need to respond to within within a one hour time frame. There's rarely that big of a crisis. So I, I think that's what works the best for me. Understood. So uh, what according to you, uh, uh, or maybe what advice would you give to the individuals who struggle uh, with finding the meaning and fulfillment in their daily routines or uh, who feel overwhelmed by the pursuit of the larger goals? I think the first part of advice is and this has worked for me, is to take some time, maybe journal, maybe reflect, you know, go for a, a hike or whatever by yourself and figure out what you really want out of life. And, and you have to keep in mind, like, it may change uh, and that's okay, but pick something that you want. Uh, I, I alluded to this before. Most of us know what we don't want, but we don't know what we want and if we know what, what you want, uh, and this could be you know related to your health, it could be related to your wealth, it could be related to a relationship, uh, we need to know what we want with some specificity, like some specifics around it. And then once you have that, that clarity, I think a lot of these other things fall to the side because it's crystal clear, this is what I want to do, this is where I want to go, this is what I, what I want to achieve. And it makes it puts a filter on your life where all these other things that may have been pulled you in a direction don't pull you that direction anymore because you have crystal clear clarity on what you're trying to achieve uh, in a relationship, in your health, or in your wealth. It doesn't matter. One of those three are the typ typically the big ones. And then all your decisions are filtered through that lens, uh, and it, it makes your life a little bit easier because you have clarity. So if you have clarity that you want, you know, you want to lose – 20 pounds by, you know, two months from now, and your friends are always asking you to go out and, you know, eat at a buffet, that doesn't align with that clarity. So you might say, okay, I'm not going to, I'm going to skip that buffet, or I'm going to skip this dessert because you have crystal clear clarity what you want. 
But most of us uh, go through life knowing what we don't want. We'll say, well, I don't want to, going on the example I just gave, I don't want to become overweight. Okay, what does it actually mean, though? You know, it doesn't mean anything specific. Uh, so having that clarity of what, what you do want to go after, I think, is extremely important. Got it. So uh, looking ahead, what do you envision as the key takeaway or message that listeners should grasp from our discussion on balancing the lives micro and the macro moments? I would say the key message, there's a couple. Uh, one of them is to know what you want versus what you do not want. Uh, figure that out. Tune into yourself. The other is to set some intention um, with with everything in your life. Uh, like it, for me, I, you know, I, I write about this in the book. I, I had a relationship fall apart because I didn't set the intention of that relationship. I, I got so focused on trying to solve this immigration issue and trying to solve this challenge with the, the parent company that bought my company that I ignored this thing, this relationship right in front of me, and it ultimately fell apart because of that. And that's because I didn't have the intention. I think when we set the intention, right. uh, like what we want out of any any endeavor in life, then it gives us a filter again to make decisions through. Uh, same thing like with that dinner I talked about a little while ago. The intention was to you know connect with my girlfriend and have a good time. So uh, if you set that intention, then the circumstances that occur are less likely to derail you. Um, so those, 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 those are the two pieces of advice. Set the intention and know what you do want. Focus on that. If you don't have an answer, reflect and journal if you need to journal and figure it out. But ultimately, it's about tuning into yourself to figure out what you do want and tuning out of everything else. We, we, we tune into everything else too much and ignore our own innate wisdom, in my opinion. Go ahead. So uh, that's really great, uh, Christian. Like, as we conclude this insightful episode, I hope, like, all of you uh, have gained the valuable insights into the art of balancing life's macro and the micro moments for the fulfillment. And always remember that it's not just about achieving the grand goals, but also about cherishing the smaller and everyday experiences that shape our uh, journey. So if you have enjoyed today's conversation with Christian and want to explore more about living uh, intentionally in the moment, be sure to check out his latest book, The In-Between Life in the Micro. So you can find it on Amazon and visit uh, Christian's website. So Christian, would you like to uh, mention your website uh, name or uh, any other thing? Yeah, my website is christianespinoza.com. My books are on Amazon, like you mentioned. The Audible version of uh, the In Between Life and the Micro just came out as well, so you can listen to it on audiobook if you like that method as well. Wow, that's real, yeah. So thank you for tuning in and stay tuned for more empowering discussions on uh, cultivating a healthy mind and a fulfilling life. So do not forget to subscribe to our podcast and share it with your friends and the family. So until next time, take care and embrace the beauty of every moment. So thank you so much.